GT4 European Series supports Project Mine. This week we're coming to you from sunny Italy for the finale of the GT4 European Championship. Just north of Milan is the historic Autodromo Nazionale di Monza, this legendary racetrack where everyone and everything lives and breathes motorsport history. The Cathedral of Speed is the scene for the climax of the spectacular first season of the GT4 European Series. Duncan Heisman refills the key to a quick lap in Monza. We take a close look at the BMW M4, the successor to the extremely successful M3. And of course, both spectacular races from Monza. The GT4 field is expanded by another awesome Aston Martin vantage in Monza. The Portuguese brothers Eugenio and Sergio Montes using this last round to dip a toe in the GT4 waters with a view perhaps to joining in in 2015's championship. We are trying to do this uh, last race of the championship to see if it's a project to the next season. So we are seeing how good is the GT4 series, if we are uh, good enough to be here. And until now, it was so far so good. We only did a test before coming here. We are still adapting because this year we did the, the sport prototypes, so it's a very different the, driving an Aston Martin compared to a prototype. Another team trying to line up a deal for 2015 is German squad Allied Racing. They're busy trying to attract enough sponsorship money to compete in the GT4 series in 2015. We are the BMW 325 Challenge gefahren in Österreich and we have a new herausforderung gesucht. And we find that it's the right for us. We are two pretty much the same as we have now a lot to learn. And also, uns hat das Wochenende bis jetzt sehr gut gefallen und wir planen auf jeden Fall in der GT4 nächstes Jahr weiterzufahren. A team Icarus, Ricardo van der Ende, could claim the championship this weekend along with teammate Bernhard van Oranje. But his greatest rival for victory in the races might come from Germany's Jörg Wiebahn, who is his teammate this weekend, having arrived at Monza without his trusty Porsche. The Porsche this weekend is in the Eiffel. You know, ProSport is a very uh, Nürburgring uh, located and orientated co uh, company, race, race firm actually. And there's a VLN race at this weekend and that is important for the team. So uh, we were struggling. Even I had a good position still in, in VLN and I decided to go for the European Championship. And uh, yeah, ProSport was of the other opinion. So we said the car is going to stay in the Eiffel. There was the possibility for me to jump into Acris. They called me Wednesday afternoon uh, because Peter Christian is ill. So uh, sorry for him, but that was good for me. So uh, I booked a flight and came down. Vibans already won races in the Porsche and in the Ginetta, and he could still be champion, but he doesn't hold out much hope as Van der Ender's advantage is a large one. Anything can happen, we know that. I mean, we had a very bad run in, in, uh, in Spa, so if the same thing happens to them this, uh, this round here in Monza, we're still in a position to win uh, the championship. But to be honest, I doubt it. Even with the problem this morning qualifying, uh, looking at the points, it's only a fifth place in one of the races, and then he's through. So uh, we believe it's, it's more or less done for them. Duncan Heisman is one of the few GT4 drivers that have raced at Monza. This makes him the ideal guide for a lap around this cathedral of speed. First you came, it's, it's very long straight before where we reach at say 255 kilometers an hour with the GT4. Um, very late on the brakes, it's always a good position to, to outbreak somebody. But more important is, 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 is the exit of turn one or from the chicane because after the second corner you get a very long a right-hand turn where you go up from second up to sixth gear, so you reach, let's say, 230, 240 kilometers an hour towards the second chicane, which is actually turn four. Uh, but very important corner this, especially for braking and on the exit of turn two. 
After that, it's the Curva Grande and up to the second chicane, a tight left right-hander in another place to overtake and make up places. Full throttle towards Lesmo 1 and Lesmo 2. Maybe not the ideal place to overtake, but it are two spectacular corners. And after Lesmo 2, it's flat out to the Varianta Ascari, the third and last chicane. Ascari chicane, the last one before Parabolica, very important chicane for me, the most challenging one of the circuit, because on entry you, you clip the curbs fully on the inside, and then in the middle part you need to be a little bit aware that you don't have too much oversteer, and then on the exit you need to clip the curbs full, because then you can do, instead of third gear, you can exit the chicane in fourth gear, which will bring you a lot of speed towards Parabolica. Another long straight leads to one of the most famous corners in the world, the Parabolica, but not as spectacular as it used to be. So the challenge of really being late on the brakes is a bit gone, but still it's, it's very, very important corner, very long, opening up, so you need to be late on the brakes, have a good entry to the apex, which is straight away into the corner, and then it will open up for one kilometer straight. And that completes the lap of the famous Monza track. Front engine V8 dominating in qualifying with Daniel Roos on pole position in Alfab Racing's Aston Martin V8 Vantage. Alongside the first of the two V8 Racing Camaros, and this is Duncan Heisman on the outside the front row of the grid with Jan Joris Verhul starting the second Camaro GT4 in third place ahead of the best of the Ginettas. Then right behind Team Acris with their BMWs in fifth and sixth positions. So going into the penultimate race of the championship, rolling start as ever here at Monza, and away they go. Duncan Heisman closest to the camera with a good start. He's going to get in front of the Aston Martin, shuttling down into the first chicane. On board with Simon Knapp, all in contact. There was two Gillettes outside him into the first corner in fourth. Oh, but look at that, he's struggling. He gets bumped by another of the BMWs. That's his teammate going through. And he's going very slowly on the inside. One of the Ginettas had pulled off. I'm not sure if it was the same car that made contact. I don't think so. On board with Rob Savers, Andre Grammatico right in front. Attacking the AM class leader. That championship is still over. Rob Savers pulling alongside down into the first of the Lesmos. And he just squeezes through there. Beautiful autumn sunlight. These are perfect Monza conditions. There is nowhere better than Monza in the autumn. Here's the lead battle. Daniel Roos in the Aston Martin, under braking. Looking to try and squeeze back in front of Heisman. Jan Joris Verhul right there in third place. And then Ricardo van der Ende in fourth. Into the pits, Simon Knapp. And that is going to really set back Jörg Vibans remote hopes of the championship a puncture on the first lap and possibly more damage as well heisman under pressure from daniel roos great to see the aston martin back and looking so strong after that huge accident that all but destroyed it at the nurburgring daniel roos in second place between the two camaros and ricardo van der ende doing all he needs in fourth position championship points heading in his direction can he get involved in this battle? Will he get involved in this battle? Roos to the inside, into the Parabolica. Goes in late and flat. Big runoff area now on the outside, but he doesn't need it, keeps the lead. However, Duncan Heisman knows this track well. Daniel Roos, this is a bold move in very late, very deep. Heisman sees him coming, lets him go through. Knows there's plenty of time left to fight back. The Aston Martin with the lead as they come around to Curva Grande. Foot to the boards. This is real high speed, hang on stuff. Cars absolutely on the brink of adhesion. Heisman is going to pull another gear. Goes around the outside. Two wheels on the grass through the gravel trap. Big moment. Daniel Roos a little naughty there. And look at that. Heisman whoa, doing well to hang on to that. That was a massive moment. He will not be impressed with Daniel Roos. For easing him out there. Roos knew he was there. 
That's really not good driving, I'm afraid. We'll take a look at this again. This could have been a very sizable accident. Daniel Roos and Duncan Heisman, first and second. Jan Joris Verhul under attack now. Through goes Ricardo van der Ender. That's the change for third place. Well, van der Ender's been biding his time. Now here comes Jan Joris Verhul. These Camaros really motor on down this long straight at Monza, don't they? Pulls alongside the BMW. His big American muscle power just driving him by. With Eugenio Montez in the Aston Martin. Oh, that's not good. Oh, heavy impact with the wall there. Well, this is in the Roggia. Just chasing the throttle a little too much. That final bump over the curbs is probably what launched him into the barriers. Pit stop's nearly ready. Lise Brahms getting ready to take over from Rob Savers in the BMW. Ricardo van der Ende attacking Jan Joris Verhul's Camaro down the inside into the first chicane. He goes through neatly. Good pass under braking. That battle rages on. Russ and Heisman, the battle for the lead. In front, Marcel Nuren has just taken over the Camaro from Jan Joris Verhul, runs out very wide in the Lesmos. And through go the lead duo to put him a lap down. Now, of course, they will lose most of that lap back again when they stop. But Marcel Nuren nearly binning the car in the beginning of his stint. Ricardo van der Ender hands over the BMW to Bernhard van der Angia. And there is Rob Savers out. In gets Lisette Brahms. Ready for half an hour around Monza. No wonder she looked happy. Who wouldn't be? Our lead contenders continue to race on. On board with Duncan Heisman. The Aston Martin right in front. Good exit there. And Heisman accelerates past. Going to dip down under the old banking here. And up to Varianti Ascari. The Aston Martin again looking back on the inside. Daniel Roos is determined to try and win this race. And so is Duncan Heisman. Through the Parabolica. Soon they're both going to have to pit. Are they coming in together? They are. Nose to tail. The battle continues onto pit road. Fantastic. And down to the V8 Racing Team comes the Camaro. Down to Alfab Racing comes the Aston Martin. And they will hand over to their teammates. Quick adjustment of tyre pressure. And getting ready to go. Like Spa, Monza's a great track and it always produces great racing. Yeah, we had a good time out there and uh, I think uh, both of us struggled from different things. I think he, he lacked a bit of brakes and uh, my rear grip was starting to go a little bit, so it was quite fun out there. But uh, we managed to pull a gap from the other ones and then we just went for it. Aston Martin ready to go, out comes Eric Behrens. Oh, and that's Luke Brahms in the Camaro. Nose to tail as they were before. Brahms looks like he was just giving Eric Behrens a little brake check there. And Stewards agree, giving him a 10 second penalty. Bernhard van Aranja in third place. Good solid points result if they finish there. That's what they need. Jörg Vibarn, their championship rival with that puncture early on, trying to pick up positions. And uh, Vibarn's regular partner, Bertus Sanders, not here this weekend. Sergio Montez out of Ascari and spins into the barriers just like Eugenio Montez did earlier on in his stint at the Roggia. Last lap of the race, Eric Behrens shadowing Luke Brahms, looking for a way by. Brahms right down the middle of the track into the Parabolica. And that might give Behrens a chance to have a sprint to the line. He's got a good run going in the Aston Martin. Will Brahms allow him room? He comes around the outside, but I don't think he's going to get, though, the Camaro first at the line. The Aston right behind, and with their BMW in third, we have new champions. Give it to the champion! <laughs> That's a very happy Ricardo van der Ender. Congratulations to him and Racing Team Holland on the European title. Victory did go to... Daniel Roos and Eric Behrens after that 10 second penalty applied to Luke Brahms. The Giannettas, Marucci and Stefanelli in front and Rob Savers and Lisette Brahms won the AM class. So congratulations all round. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Jij hebt een vriend. Hey, hey. Europees kampioen. Ja, yeah, it feels, feels really great. Uh, there's only been three and if we've got them all. But uh, don't forget, for Bernard, it's his first, so we're going to celebrate it. Bernard, it means a lot for you, this championship. Yeah, I was I was not sure if I could drive this year. And when I was driving, I was really happy. You know, we can be in the car again and uh, and then uh, becoming a European champion. Uh, I mean, it's incredible. It's got no words for it. After the break, we'll see the deciding race in the AM Championship and we'll take a close look at the new BMW M4. GT4 European Series supports Project Mine. GT4 European Series supports Project Mine. One of Europe's greatest racetracks, playing host to the FIA GT4 European Series, the final race weekend at the Autodroma Nazionale di Monza. Coming up, we'll show you the final race of the championship. But first, let's look to the future. The biggest difference uh, actually starts in the name. Uh, the M3 turns into the M4. The 3 Series Coupe, they call it uh, the 4 Series now. So that's one of the biggest changes. And of course, uh, the engine. Before in the M3 we had a big flat V8, 4 liters. And now in the new version, the M4, we only got a, a line 6, uh, 6 cylinders. Not one turbo, but two turbos, so more torque. In horsepower, they're exactly the same, but more torque means, uh, means just a little bit more acceleration out of the corners. Uh, they use a lot of carbon in the M4, so uh, that's why the, the car is 100 kilos lighter than before. We're looking at it now to change the, the M4 road car into an M4 uh, GT4 for next year. Um, there's a lot already done, because it's, it's like a street legal racing car. So we don't have to change actually uh, a lot to, to make it a, a racing car. Um, we need to check uh, the safety. Of course, we need to put in a, a roll cage. We need to put in a, a bucket seat. Of course, uh, the, the big belt for the safety. Um, also, a fire extinguisher and of course, the fuel tank. The brakes on the M4, they're huge already for a production car, uh, but the car is made to last at least for, uh, for the set of brake pads for at least 50,000 kilometers. Um, in the racing car, we uh, use one set of brake pads just for one event. So uh, we're gonna put a little bit bigger discs, bigger uh, pads and bigger calipers, brake later. Lighter is always, always better. Uh, before on the M3, when we build it, it's easier to take off weight. But now the M4, it's got a already a lot of carbon metals. Um, so it's more difficult to get the weight off of the M4 than it was with the M3. Like uh, the drive shaft, that's already carbon. Uh, and with the old M3, the old M3, um, 
there was still uh, some, uh, some weight to gain. Because the M4 is already such a good production racing car, we don't have to make a lot of adjustments. We're just gonna do a little bit of the toe in, a little bit of the canvas to go quicker through the, the corners. Before we consign it to history, the GT4 spec M3 still has one race to finish off the year. A year that's been a huge success. Let's have a word with championship coordinator Max Brands. It was a really nice season. Uh, we started on the grid with 20 cars uh, plus in Misano. Now here in Monza we have uh, 17 cars, so which is still positive. Compared with the Dutch GT a few years ago, we only had 6 to 8 cars. And now with, uh, with 17 it's already positive. For the next year we have uh, already a lot of applications for teams who are interested. We are going to, to announce the calendar shortly, which is positive. It has been a hugely entertaining season with the final race just about to get underway at Monza. That's guaranteed to round it out on a high. Manuel Lasani on pole position in his Ginetta G50 and alongside in the Aston Martin of Eric Behrens. The balance of performance in the GT4 series, meaning that all these different makes, shapes and styles of cars are very close together. Here we go then for the final time, the rolling start and look from behind. The two turquoise Gionettas trying to make a move. It's going to be very tight down into the first corner. On ball with Luke Brahms. Contact there as they all check up in front. And with Lisette, she's over the kerbs on the inside, trying to squirrel round and avoid the damage. Well, that was an absolutely classic Monza start, wasn't it? Cars going in all directions down at the first chicane. Looks like she's okay. Looks like everybody got through. There was plenty of contact. Three or four wide, <laughs> that's really not working at the first chicane. Not sure anybody really, apart from the first two or three cars, got through without damage. There's bits of mirror and bodywork all over the place. Luca Magnoni's Ginetta looks to be the only major casualty. Battle under braking. Eric Behrens grabs the lead. <laughs> not everybody makes it all the way through the Roger. On board with Andre Gramatico, tyre smoke in front. Got to be a little bit cautious, but you really want to make up places on the opening lap. Bernhard van Arangia gets very sideways over the kerbs, and by goes Andre Gramatico before we get to the Lesmos. Jesse Antilla leading the race from the black heart of Manuel Lasagne. Stefano Stefanelli in third, but look at Marcel Nuren with a damaged nose on the Camaro up the inside. Eric Behrens trying to go around the Ginetta as well. Nuren is up to third position. Oh, that's Jörg Vibarn, very wide in the BMW. The Brahms has had the damaged Camaro checked over. Seems like he is ready to go. On board with Marcel Nuren. Great run going. And the Camaro down the inside. Takes the lead of the race from Jesse Antilla. He's worked his way past all those Ginettas. Just gets that big V8 stopped. And just completed the move before they got into the yellow flag zone at the first chicane as well. Russ Morris Racing Team watching from the garage. Challenge on the Aston Martin. Then Hadfani Ranja battling with Eric Behrens. Oh, and again the BMW, a little twitchy. Damage splitter at the front of the Camaro. Luke Brahms now doesn't have a damage splitter at the front of the Camaro. That's long gone. Bernhard van Oranje in the orange BMW coming around the outside of Eric Behrens in the Aston Martin. Behrens with the left-hand turn signal on. You can never trust that though, that might just be on by accident. Not sure that he was going to get out of the way. I think Bernhard van Oranje decided they're going to have to take this position and he did at Ascari. It stops number two car Luke Brahms handing over to Duncan Heisman. In comes Marcel Nuren in the number three car. With Camaros on pit road. That front end damage, he has been reporting problems as well. And you can see steam coming out of the front of the car. The Astros it was in front of me and he breaks, uh, in my opinion, 50 meters earlier than me. And I hit him. The radiator is uh, leaking uh, water. But uh, I saw the temperature uh, uh, slowly coming up, but I still was racing and racing. I, lay, I was on the first place and suddenly it was getting too high, so then it's over. Sergio Montez in the Aston Martin. Got it, got it, got it. Haven't got it. Just getting away from him on the exit. This is a very different car from the prototypes that they're used to. 
Ricardo van der Ende ready to take over from Bernhard van Arantia in the number one championship winning car. It stops underway. This is the 18 Porsche. Alka Rignes ready to take over from Peter Larsen who started that car. Lead changing as the pit stops happen. Manuel Lasagne heads into the pit lane and that leaves the turquoise car of Jesse Antilla as our race leader. This has been really entertaining all season long. Very close on pace, just about everywhere. So Lasagne almost in his pit box, half in the fast lane, the team. Clearing out a few autumn leaves. Oh, and Jesse Antilla locking up into the first chicane. Trying to make his in-lap a good one. Has to zigzag through the chicane. And that cost him all the time he might have gained. Salvador Tineo ready to take over the Triple Eight car from Jesse Antilla. Daniel Rose and the Aston Martin carving his way through the Ginettas. A little bit David versus Goliath battle here in terms of absolute size of the Aston and engine size as well. And Daniel Rose having a really good run in the Alfab racing car. He's been such a great addition to this championship. A moment here for Harker Rignes in the Porsche. Locks up, avoids the wall. Quick trip through the gravel. Checkered flag for Manuel Lasagne. The pole man wins overall. Jörg Wiebahn, Simon Knapp taking second place and victory in the GT4 class. And Andre Gramatico wins the AM class and the championship title. And that's Jörg Wiebahn's third different car that he has won in in the GT4 championship this year. Andre Gramatico, seventh overall, our AM champion. And Jörg Wiebarn, the most adaptable man in the series. In Misano with the uh, Ginetta and the Porsche race in Porsche, I think. And now here with the BMW, very pleased. At least now second place in the uh, championship. So it was quite okay. Je suis content parce que j'ai fini sur la, une victoire, sur la dernière course, parce que c'était important de finir euh, euh, comme il faut, on dit en français. <rire> okay. Hier, euh, je n'ai pas, pas le rythme hier, euh, donc je n'étais pas content, mais aujourd'hui, euh, voilà, une victoire, euh, championnat, ça va, comme ça, ça me plaît. <rire> It's good for me. So here are our FIA GT4 European Champions. Ricardo van der Ende and Bernhard van Arangia in the BMW claiming the Pro Class title and BMW driver Andre Gramatico the AM Class at the end of a great season. Well, I suppose all good things must come to an end and so does this, the first season of the GT4 European Series. 12 fantastic races, three deserving champions. We'd love to see you next year with the new season of this terrific series. For now, Ciao! Je bent Europees kampioen! GT4 European Series ondersteunt Project Mine.